Okay, so I found this video yesterday in my recommended. Uh, the video is in regards to the DLC prices for Texas Chainsaw and all the controversy it sparked up. Now, my take on the whole DLC controversy thing. I think for the most part the prices are fine. My only issue is with the prices of uh it's mostly with the prices with the characters. I feel like that those are way too costly for what you're getting. Because then you're getting you're paying ten dollars for a singular character. I feel like that's a bit pricey for what it is. Yeah. This video is by uh, LilyPie101. Uh, credit. So I'm going to be putting uh, a link in the description of the video that I put out. And also, do not go and harass this person as well. I feel like that I shouldn't have to say that, but I know some people will probably do it. So I'm just going to put that out there. This is just for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. Let's go ahead and full screen this and let's go 3, 2, 1, play. People have a huge problem with TCM prices and I can definitely All understand right. it's steeper than most would like. But on yeah. my timeline, I have noticed a huge wave of mutuals from the DVD community giving flack because of these prices. Honestly, comparing them back and forth. But from a game development point of view, there's a lot of ignorance and things that people have to consider. Number one, okay. Gun is an indie company. The yeah, origins of Gun correct. came about in 2012 after Gun Wes Media Keltner, is a connoisseur a... of both video games and horror, won its... Alright, yeah. Gun Media is a indie studio. However, that we should take this into consideration when we go over her next points. And we could just, I could basically just share, like, my opinion of it all. Yeah. That's, like, fair it's enough. in the games industry. But, living in Kentucky, that probably meant he would need to leave his home state and go somewhere much more right? expensive where games development was much more popular, such as the likes of California. Yeah, which I can is, see that. Which, as many of us know, is extremely expensive. That was until he started his own company, Gun Interactive. According to an article published just last year in October, okay. Gunn only had 11 employees, and now there's about 70, according to the LinkedIn. They aren't a bigger right. company, and they simply can't afford to work for free or for less, like some people obviously. are implying. That Number is, two, licensing. Obvious. For an indie company to have acquired a license from one of the most popular horror franchises, it's nothing short of amazing. But do we know how much that alone costs them? We don't know, but considering how the franchise has grossed hundreds of millions throughout the years that it's been around, it is expensive. But yeah, that, again, that is licensing true. the IP licensing is just one expensive. part of the overall cost when it comes to developing a game. This doesn't factor in software and hardware costs, marketing costs, server hosting and maintenance costs, especially since it's a live service game, anti-cheat costs, employee costs depending on their roles such as voice actors, rigging artists, sound engineers, level designers, programmers, animators, 3D modelers, yep. outsourcing costs, and just so much, so much more. Not to mention, Ed Neal himself reprised his role as Hitchhiker for this game via voice lines. Do you see how expensive this man is? Exactly. Number three. Right. Okay, so about this, um, I feel as though that, yeah, well, yes, licensing is expensive. I feel like they made quite a bit of money off this game considering that this game is forty dollars up front this game is forty dollars up front and it came with two dlc on launch and a free chainsaw pack for bubba which contains a bunch of chainsaw skins and then the first of nearest execution pack which contains like two executions for each of the characters that was around six to seven dollars. I feel as, and since 
this game ended up, uh, I would say, launching to pretty decent success, I would say, I feel like they would have made quite a bit of money. And also considering how they also made quite a bit of money off of Friday the 13th, that their prior game that they made, and which is also a licensed game. I feel like combining all that, I would say they, they're definitely not poor. They're definitely not poor. Let's, how, like, yes, they're an indie studio, and they're not going to have as much money as, like, the bigger AAA studios, but they're not exactly broke either. They got money. They're making lots of money. They're not exactly broke here. The game is widely played for cheap or free for some people already. I've seen people complain about the base price of this game too. This game is also available on Xbox Game Pass for a measly $10 a month, and it's also available on PC through Game Pass. A lot of people aren't paying the $10 alone just for TCM, and if they are, they aren't paying the full $40 for it. And compared to industry standards where the average game costs $60 to $70 space with nothing extra unlockable, I think this is pretty fair. TCM includes extra skins and executions. Number four, yeah. people are spoiled. Okay. For in terms of base price, this thing and the argument that it's on Game Pass, so people are getting it for cheap. I mean, this also adds on to the point that they're not broke either, because they're they're making money off Game Pass. Like some of the proceeds. Go to Gun Media directly of Game Pass for for people that bought the game off Game Pass. Yeah, they're getting it for cheaper, but they're getting a lot more purchases from Game Pass because of it, and thus balancing itself out. So they're making quite a. I reckon they're making quite a bit of money off Game Pass. So I don't see how this is an argument. I think the base price in, in, price is fine. However, if you're going to be charging us $10 for a singular character with a base price of $40, I'd say that's a bit steep, in my opinion. Spoiled. I know many keep comparing it to DVD, so I'll just go ahead and compare two. Behavior has quite the head start being founded in 1992, and it left the indie company range quite some time ago. They now have over a thousand employees. DVD itself, although not a AAA company, along with other major gaming companies, they can afford to have lower prices, as they have a secure and committed player base with millions of active players. A fast food item or a meal can be on the cheaper side, but a similar item or a meal at a local restaurant can cost me a whole lot more. This is the same principle with major gaming companies versus indie devs. DBD also has $15 skins, but some of them are just a skin with nothing extra to them like animation, uh, sound effects. Uh, give me, give me a sec, guys. Alright, hold on one sec. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, where, where was I? Oh, yes. Bex, oh. Mori's, Terror Radius, etc. For example, the Luxie for the Doctor, the Minotaur for Oni, the Ferryman for Blight, yeah. etc. are all $15 skins, but people are fine paying for them. DVD also doesn't even have custom Mori's yet, but the upcoming Trapper skin with just a Mori alone is $20. Nothing more, nothing less. 
DVD has new characters that get added very often since we have new content. Okay, uh, in terms of the cosmetics, I don't have a problem with, like, the cosmetic pricings. I mainly have a problem with, like, the character prices. I feel like I should put point that out. In every three months, but at the cost of needing bug fixes, tweaks, and reworks for a lot of them. Some can take months to years to receive these changes. For example, Thujin Skull Merchant, twins with dozens of documented bugs upon release and still pending their rework, Freddy pending a rework, Flight pending an add-on pass, First Project W Chapter being unplayable actually for console due to RPD consistently crashing, etc. But I would rather wait and pay more for these indie devs that are providing a little bit more closely polished content to avoid some future frustrations. I know not everything has been gravy for TCM in terms of polishing, but they have been averaging an update a week to address balance issues for both family and victims, as well as community issues and bugs. DVD has characters that cost $5 if they're non-licensed, but if the character is a survivor, they're basically a skin with perks. Right. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. And upon release, the character will also come with recolors. So add in the common cosmetics, usually four or so priced at 90 Oryx cells, then three uncommons with more intricate details priced at 270 Oryx cells. Add the additional seven skins together, and it equals about 1,600 plus Oryx cells, or yeah, $16 we at least. Know that Even if you're removing one of the skins to make it on par with the standard six skins a TCM has, it's still more than $10. But in TCM, a basic victim goes for $10 for unique voice line interactions, abilities, perks, and six additional skins. A basic family member also goes for $10 with the same things, except for the additional skins, I'm assuming, based off of what we have now. But they do have unique animations and executions. Yeah, and so do Number DVD five, killers. Number people are spoiled by the world. Okay, uh... thing I want to point out with this is that, uh... With, in terms of, uh, you know, comparing DVD to, uh, Texas Chainsaw, I don't think that's a fair comparison. The gameplay of those two games are not even remotely similar. But if we're going to be comparing DVD with uh, Texas Chainsaw in terms of what they sell you, I'd say there's a, that DVD has a much better deal. By a long shot. Because you have to consider, what are you getting with your $10? If you spend $10 on Texas Chainsaw, you get a singular character that you're not guaranteed to play. Whereas in DVD, if you were to spend those same $10 on DVD, you could get a character, er, a killer, six new perks, and you're guaranteed to play said character. Because as with killers, because it's just you, you're not competing with anyone else to get those characters. So you get more bang for your buck. And then there's also the cosmetics. Thanks. Again, you're not competing with other people to get the characters, so you don't always get value off of your purchase. Whereas Texas Chainsaw, because you're not confirmed to be getting the character that you want due to its first come first serve, you're not guaranteed to get value. So basically, you could. And it spend 10 bucks on like a Black Nancy, which is leaked to be the next family member. You could spend $10 on, on her and then just end up, up almost and just end up could potentially not be able to ever play the character. Art is so readily available to all of us in various mediums, some that we probably don't even recognize. Art is music, poetry, TV shows, movies, digital and traditional art, video games, sculptures, and more. People are spoiled to the point where they don't realize that the readily available content does come at a price and artists should be paid their worth. Some talents can be tedious and very expensive to carry out. This is the very reason why we have people striking, because some companies refuse to pay artists yeah. their worth. 
This is most notable with the 2023 SAG after strikes, which exposed just how little talents are being paid for work. Okay. Yeah, th this is a fair point. There are some people that, like, don't uh, understand that companies need to make money in order to sell good products. They need to be able to make money. I think we can all understand that. Is that companies need to make money in order to uh, make good products. Same with artists, same with everybody else. In order to do good work, you need to be making money. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with this point. Companies trying to cut corners and more. And funnily enough, there's actually a strike up and coming for the video games industry as well. So I recommend you keep yourself in the loop to see who and what gets exposed and whether or not your favorite games will be affected. This especially hits hard for me because before I was ever a streamer and full-time content creator, I was an artist and I really regret charging so little for art pieces like this when this could have easily been $200 to $300 but I was often told that my art was too simple or just not worth it when it took me years to develop this skill, but also master it. And I did it I don't on my disagree own. with this point. I and I know some people point. may have a couple of counterpoints and here are some that have been bought up to me. Number one, but in Friday the 13th, this DLC was this cheap. Yes, but that was also over six years ago. Since then, we've seen the world change in many ways with the introduction of COVID and more inflation into the economy. A whole lot of things in this world simply are the price that they used to be. If you step into the real world, you'll notice these things. Hell, even one of my favorite snacks, a hash brown from McDonald's has gone up from $1.09 to $3.19 for a f***ing hash brown. And this is from McDonald's of all places, the largest fast food chain in the world. Okay, so in regards to her basically blaming inflation for this as a counterpoint, I don't think this is a fair counterpoint, to be honest. Yes. The hash brown comparison, that didn't matter as, that don't matter as much because that was raised by a dollar or two. This was raised to like up to two, two more dollars. You have to pay two more dollars for hash brown. The problem is, is that you're not getting enough bang for your buck. You're get, they're charging too much for too little that you're getting from it. You get a character and nothing else. You don't even get the cosmetics. You have to play the character in order to get cos the cosmetics for them. And because as it's hit or miss on whether or not you'll get to play the character, you don't get the cosmetics. It's as simple as that. The issue is, is that you're not getting, you're not getting enough value for what you're paying for. And that's the big problem with the purchases. Is that there's not enough content within that $10 to, for it to be worth that amount. Number two. Most other games at least provide a way to grind for Oh yeah, and also in terms of the inflation thing. Because, like, it's going up $2. Whereas I think DLC for Friday was like five to six dollars. This is jumping up to ten. That is pretty expensive for what you're getting. You know, and consider and it, if we're if it's going to be if the what they're going to be doing is they're going to be releasing a survivor, uh, victim and a. Uh, family member in one patch you are be going to be spending 20 bu du bucks for two characters you're not even confirmed to be getting content so if you have to pay to win it's bad yes but do you realize how much time you have to spend to unlock all of those free things in dvd alone it takes over a thousand hours or so of grinding just to unlock all non-licensed characters and this is calculated just from posts that i found online for example, for every match you're in that lasts 10 minutes, you earn at least 600 guaranteed XP. And since you're in approximately 0.0716 iridescent shards per experience point, you get about 43 eerie shards per match. So you'll need 210 matches just to get to 9,000 eerie shards. That is 35 hours to unlock one character. Just one. 
but there's about 33 unlockable non-licensed characters, not including base game ones, of course, like the original four survivors, so on and so forth, that cost 9,000 eerie shards each, totaling 297,000 eerie shards altogether. So you need to play 6,907 matches minimum to be able to earn enough eerie shards to unlock every single non-licensed DVD character. That is 1,151 hours at base. And again, this math does not calculate queue times, lobby dodges, crashes or DCs, matches ending prematurely, so on and so forth. And again, this also does not calculate the grind it takes to prestige and unlock perks on every character either. That's another... Okay, I, I don't agree with this take whatsoever. Like, this does not counter the whole pay to win argument whatsoever. This is not, not counter it in any way. It's still going to be pay to win because if the character release is broken, then that's pay to win. Objectively. There's no going around that. If you're forced to pay for a character and that character is meta, then that's pay to win. Plain and simple. The, and then the, there's the whole, whole takes so long to grind for free and things like of course there's going to be grind there's no game that has free stuff enough where there isn't a grind to get it that's every game game and just because the grind will take too long doesn't mean that game developers shouldn't do free shit or ads and stuff for free that you can grind for just because it would take so long doesn't mean that it's worth it's not worth adding like again with like dvd eh like yeah it's gonna take a long time for you to get iridescent charts so you can get a character but we ha we at least have the option to if we want to and if we're dedicated enough we can get those characters we just want the option of being able to do it like yeah it will take a long time but that does not matter because we have the option of getting it for free i i'm going to compare this to like a a game that i play hey? That has a pretty decent grind. And uh, Warframe is a good example of this. Yes. So say you want to get this Warframe called Limbo. That does uh, has abilities to be able to uh, go through pocket dimensions and whatnot. In order to get Limbo for free, you have to you know, go all... Go through half the uh, half the solar system, so that way you could gain access to the Limbo Therium quest. Complete said quest, and and then craft each individual part, which needs separate resources for. And then each part cost takes twelve hours to complete. And then craft the Warframe itself, which takes 72 hours to craft in real time. And do people care? No, because they have the choice of getting it for free. Because the choice is there. Because everything you can get in the game can be obtained for free. If they put in the hours, they can get the thing that they want. It doesn't matter that the grind is long, but because the free items are there and they're enticing. So, I don't agree with the take that because uh, the grind would be long, it doesn't mean it shouldn't be added. It should definitely be added. I don't think it's a good counterpoint to not put the characters in as a, a free option to get them. A couple thousand hours. Easily. 
Like it would just make a it would make an even better incentive to play the game more. There'd be more incentive to play the game more because there'd be characters that you could get for free. More more rewards that you could get potentially for free. And if you don't feel like getting it, you could pay the money. Everybody wins. Silly. But let's say you don't want to grind that heavy for good perks, but you also don't want to pay to win. You can wait for the Shrine of Secrets, a weekly opportunity to get randomly selected perks and DVD for the perks you want. Let's say Reassurance, a popular perk that addresses killers camping. Okay, Reassurance. Okay, the uh, Shrine of Secrets is not a good comparison to Texas Chainsaw's grind. Shrine of Secrets is an absolute scam of a system. You spend so much eerie shards to get a character er, tier, a character perk tier, when you could have spent that at uh, iridescent shards to just getting the character itself, or just you know, fork up. Fork, fork five dollars over to behavior grab the character and you can be able to get the perks for free along with the character not only are you going to be getting a, a character you'd also be getting the perks along with it whereas shrine of secrets you spend so much eerie shards to get a third of a perk that's not a very good deal whereas with tcm you're always going to, whenever, whenever you grind, you'll be getting stuff that, you'll always be getting stuff that is worth a damn. And it's also RNG on whether or not the perks that you get at are even worth getting in the first place. Whereas TCM, although you have the random perks, you can respec as many times as you want for free whenever you want in order to get the perks that you want. That is not a very good comparison whatsoever. Reassurance was released with Rebecca Chambers as part of the Project W chapter in August 2022. If you wanted reassurance, it appeared in the shrine six months later, the week of February 22nd, 2023. The point is, the grind for these games is predatory because most people can't afford the time, so they'll just have to pay for it instead anyways. And if they don't pay for all of it, they'll at least pay for some of it. I play video games full time for a living and even I struggle with grinding for this free content at times because unless they're the main game for my content creation, it's hard. I do plenty of things outside of my job like other people, despite it being based around games. I can imagine what this would be like for someone that does work a 9 to 5 away from home with their own set of responsibilities that are more like kids and then they also have hobbies and then everything else. But okay. Like, here's the thing. Not everyone, ha yes, not everyone has the time to be grinding for shit. But the thing is, is that uh, not everybody has the money to continuously keep investing into this game and getting characters. Not everyone has the money or the luxury to be able to spend money. Not everyone has that luxury. So... Why not give us a free way of getting the characters? Because not, not everyone can afford the new characters. Every, like, say you got, like, a, they add new two new characters, a victim and a, and a, a family member, every two months, like DVD. That would be 20 bucks that you would have to spend every two months if you were wanting to get every single character right. now that's not that's gonna that's gonna add up to whenever you get to a year so you you should like even if like people don't have the time to grind not everyone has the time to get the care not everyone has the money to afford the characters for me, a great example would be me wanting to get into Overwatch because a couple of friends wanted to play it with me. But to unlock a single character that I was interested in, it was taking 35 wins just for one. 
As somebody that's brand new, this could easily take me dozens of hours. It's designed to make people give up and give into playing, and just because it's a common tactic doesn't mean it's a very good one. The difference with Overwatch is Overwatch is a free-to-play game. You're paying $40 up front for TCM. Overwatch, all you have to do is download the game, and then you can get everything for free. Overwatch is free to play, yet you fail to mention this. Number three. Free to play games like Valorant or Overwatch make their content expensive because that's the only way that they can make their money. I totally understand that, but again, they are much bigger companies. That and the effort that they put into their models is kind of subpar in comparison to a game like TCM from what I've seen. Because in Val, a good portion of their skins for weapons and knives that cost a good chunk of money don't even have any effects to it. It's basic texture work that could get thrown into Photoshop and Blender, but it still gets heavily priced. Number four, but I'm not guaranteed to play. How does this relate whatsoever? But that's just all the, because other companies are much scummier. Does it mean that, and Gun Media could indulge in such tactics as well because other people are doing it. That is a very stupid argument. Because, oh, because other people are doing it, doing it with less quality doesn't mean that TCM could do it. It's effectively you know, the same thing. Their system is also predatory. For what the base game is. I'm sure they don't mean to be predatory, but that's how it is. Play the character I bought. This isn't really a TCM exclusive issue. This also happens in Overwatch and Valorant and other character selection games. And before you say, yeah, but you can just unlock them, just remember the system that I explained earlier. That and you could also consider the following. Lobby dodging exists with no penalties, but you can also play in a stack or find a group to avoid this. I do however think this is a system that they could look into for the future as they've been very receptive to feedback. Okay, th this is probably the worst point. This is the worst counterpoint out of all of them in this video, I would say. The There's a big difference between Overwatch lobby dodging and TCM lobby dodging is that with Overwatch lobby dodging is that one there is no char character that you're forced to play in order to even remotely start the game whereas with TCM there has to be a bubba otherwise the game cannot start and also now, Overwatch or Valorant games can start without a full lobby, whereas TCM requires a full lobby as well as a bubble player in order to start. And right now, we are currently in an epidemic of uh, the lack of bubble players. No one wants to play bubble. And all this system is going to do is encourage people to lobby dodge more, and it's even more of a problem in TCM because you need a certain character to even start the game and when people lobby dodge it extends the timer of uh, it extends the queue time timer which means you're going to be staying in the lobby for longer and if and with the system in place people are going to lobby dodge a lot more which means they're going to be sitting in queues for longer and longer and longer, they'll keep going on until in infinity. And also with, you no, know, with those games, there were so with like Overwatch or Valorant, there were so many other characters you can play. Whereas TCM, you only have a handful of characters you could realistically play. And if you ha don't have those characters invested into you're probably going to have a very bad time. But this is just an overall shit point. All having a system charging for a singular character in a game like this 
it's going to make the lobby dodging much worse. And also the argument of, oh, you could just play with friends. Not everyone has a consistent three stack they could play with, a three or four stack. Not everyone has friends that have the game and are willing to let you play the, the character. You know, some people are, what about the people that are forced to solo queue, like me? Not everyone is going to have a squad they could play with. And I don't think that's fair to them. But to dismiss the point by saying, oh, it's a thing in other games, and also you could just you know, queue up with your friends. Not everyone, one, not everyone has friends. Two, the lobby dodging is much more worse in this game than it is in any other game because of the way character selection works. Because it's completely different to how every other game does it. All I'm saying is that I think I can understand any and all feelings because I'm not one to take away from how people feel. I think it's valid to complain. But I think given what I've said, a lot of us should be able to rethink, especially those of you that are being rather unsavory towards the devs that are just trying to make a living. Yeah, we should not, you should not be sending death threats to like the devs or saying, oh, the game is dead. It's been, too, it's been like a month or two. Hell, it's only been like, actually, no, it's been more like a couple of weeks, I think. Like, at least a week or like a couple of weeks or like a solid month. Give the game a chance. Alright? It's just, it's not even been out for that long. It's too early to say if this game is going to die or not. Living, doing what they love. I've done a fair share of my own personal projects years ago and still do when I have free time. So I understand some of the background processes that go on in video games, but they're something that I'm very passionate about. And that passion does not just stop at viewing or playing them. But hey, no matter how you feel at the end of the day, it is what it is. If you guys want to buy it, you'll buy it. And if not, you just won't. But I provide all the insight that I can and I hope that you guys can understand it. But either way, I'm- Okay, uh, my overall thoughts. There were some points that I did agree with, however, most of the things she said, I could not get behind. Like, she has some points that I would agree with, but then it's also mixed in with some other points that, honestly, I don't know who could really agree with. That just either don't, that just completely miss it, the point. Of what the concern is or it's just it does not even like uh have anything to do with the concerning question like, once again don't send harassment to this person now this is just me have a differing opinion and to another fellow content creator. She should not be harassed due to her opinions. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's a that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get back into regular streaming.